crying. Hey. You're not. I'm not. AZ has moved on to other projects, and we're sad to see her go, but also excited to see what she does next. To get your AZ fix, make sure to follow her on Twitter and Instagram. I'll miss her ledgers. In the meantime, Holly's will be stepping in to help me to continue to bring you all the funnies. So let's get into it. Hello, everyone, and welcome to my channel. Today, I'm going to show you my everyday simple routine. So if you want to know how I went from this to this, please keep on watching. First, let's make sure our complexion is presentable and fair. This blemish cream fades all darknesses and imperfections. If you want to be light and bright, try tan away. Coupon code in the video description box. Now that our skin is prepped, let's play in some makeup. Now, you'll want to use the proper shade for your complexion. There's one other shade in this range. I'll swatch it for you. That's nice, isn't it? Check my channel out next week when I go through my hot comb tutorial next. How do I look? Human beings have valued beauty for a long time. Winged eyeliner has been on point since the ancient Egyptians. It's the way we communicate how much money we have, our social status, and values like modesty. But the perception and definition of beauty morphs over time, and our society is no different. I mean, makeup trends went from this to this in just a couple of years. And when it comes to black beauty, consider our cocoa butter curiosity peaked. We want to learn more. Finding the beauty in all our shades and textures has a complex history that's changed with the times, just like the depiction of women in advertising, for example. Some of it warms our hearts, and some of it makes us cringe. So, instead of attempting to define and explain everything, which is high key impossible, we picked three products or items, one in hair care, one in skincare, and one in makeup to show you just how far the world of black beauty has come. And, ah. Research. Let's do this. Yes. We can learn about. Oh. <laughs> yes. I'm going straight for it. Consistent. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Ooh. That's a lot. That's a lot. Okay. I have a palette. I have a couple of palettes. Mm -hmm. And you're like, Evelyn, you don't wear eyeshadow. <laughs> so I'll buy them. You remember you remember your mama having to Let's do and then <laughs> parting the Red Sea. <laughs> you want some? Sure. Missed me. Look, got my glasses on, but whatever. <laughs> oh, look at these look perfectly. At the Manicured froze. Okay, that's not real. That's, that's not. Real. First product, head wraps. Ooh, that's all me. That is, is all me. me. I'm, I'm wearing one too, but okay, I'm wearing one too. Wait, I've what got... did we find out about head wraps? Yeah, okay. When you think of head wraps now, you probably imagine stunning models with sky high pieces of colorful pattern fabric. And Evelyn, I guess you think of Evelyn too, but historically in the US, black women covered their hair for more practical reasons. You can imagine slave owners didn't particularly care about hygienic working conditions or because it was the law. Ah yes, Tignon. Tignon? I know it had to do with the French, Creole, Tignon. The same gross logic that empowered slave owners to forcibly shave the heads of enslaved women made an appearance in 1786 when Spanish colonial governor Don Esteban Miro enacted the Edict of Good Government, also called the Tion Laws. It prohibited Creole women of color in New Orleans from displaying excessive attention to dress. Basically, some of y'all are a little too light-skinned, or your bundles are a little too luxurious, and we can't have you out here whipping your curls around looking this fly. So they were forced to wear a scarf or handkerchief called a tillon as a public signifier that they belonged to the slave class, even if they were free. Louisiana has always been unique because French and Spanish colonial rule worked a lot differently than the English. The Spanish law of Cortesión put a market value, an actual price, on an enslaved person and stated that if you could raise that money, you could buy back your freedom. Now, before you go praising this particular flavor of colonizer, it was just a different strategy. The idea was, if they allowed somewhat of a black middle class to exist, the institution of slavery would last longer. But, plot twist, now you got a growing population of free black people, you got hella mixed people, and Louisiana is now a little too much of a melting pot. Before the tea on laws, free women of color in New Orleans would use beads, feathers, and other forms of jewelry in their hair, adding to their exotic allure. It's kind of gross. Yeah. So Governor Don Esteban thought a piece of fabric would dim the sisters' light. He thought we'd look homely. 
Homeboy was sadly mistaken. Come through head wrap with vibrant colors and elaborate time techniques. You better give us Marie Laveau, both a historical figure and Angela Bassett's flawless television adaptation. Because we are who we are and we do what we do, we turned it into something beautiful, continuing to cover our hair throughout the decades, cooperating with businesses and African nations to source fabric. Even our Creole queen used it to call back to her culture. Good hair, bad hair, I am not my hair. Instead of researching relaxers or making fun of jerry curls, actually, let's do that. Yeah, let's do that, yeah. Just let your soul go. Just let it shine through. Just let your Like hair, skin tone has such a deep-rooted hold on our perception of beauty. It was used as a descriptor in slave records and had very real violent implications when it came to social structures. It could determine one's fate as an enslaved person. In a world of 10-step skincare routines and black don't crack, we wanted to see how far our complexion products have come. So, we found that skin lightening products emerged for the black elite in DC around the 1840s and 50s and continued after emancipation into the early 20th century. These days, ingredients like hydroquinone are used to block the enzyme present in the melanin producing process, but not much is known about the ingredients used back then or their effectiveness. But we do have throwback advertisements. I mean, the names of these products are wild. Dr. Reed's Magic Face Bleach, Tan Off, Black Skin Remover. So there's an ad provided by The Colored American, which dates February 15th, 1902. And on this ad, we have, you know, the title is Black Skin Remover, a wonderful face bleach and hair straightener. And it has a before image of a darker skinned woman with kinkier hair. And then the after image is a very, very fair woman with straight hair and a bun. The words to even describe that or the fact that the app was even playing on insecurities of Black seeming to be negative, seeming to be poor, seeming to be everything that you would not want to be has definitely been a detriment to Black culture. Now, even though white passing was a thing, it's an oversimplification to assume people with dark complexions who use these products wanted to be white. Folks were more concerned with the color complex within black communities. Remember, skin tone could impact how you'd go on to fare in the world, what jobs you'd get hired for, and how you'd be treated. Nobody was under the delusion that they would actually become white. These products simply played to the realities of being black. You know, this is not called the place of the American dream for no reason. Everyone wants to participate in that dream and wants the very best for themselves. And if this is a way to get there, then maybe, you know, in this desperate attempt to be seen as human, to be recognized, to be appreciated, then I need to straighten my hair, discolor my skin, and then maybe society will become a more bearable place. Woo, uh, it's heavy. Okay. Um, we need some comedy. Yes. Yeah. Just love, just and we're back. And to be clear, we're not saying that in the olden days, everybody struggled to accept their beauty. The Lonesome Hearts column from the African-American newspaper, the New York Interstate Tattler, that ran from 1929 to the early 1930s, showed that yes, skin tone was always top of mind, and used to describe someone before, say, height. And yes, some valued features that supported colorism. But also yes, some people liked being brown and felt worthy of asking for a love connection. Whether it's an ad, a tabloid column, or music and movies, mass media can give you a peek into society. Much like hair, representation of different skin tones in the media increased over time, albeit super slowly. Yes, your natural expression of pride is beautifully expressed with Afrosheen. Afrosheen, beautiful products for a beautiful people. And while we'd all love to believe we're free thinkers above the influence of pop culture, seeing different types of people lauded as desirable and beautiful shaped the way we feel about ourselves. So when superstar James Brown screamed, say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud, with his hit 1968 song, people felt that. He didn't say, I'm medium brown, or like, I'm black when I like black black. And that matters. Those skin bleaching creams are now generally taboo, or at least reason for pause and internet ridicule or pity, they still exist. On one hand, 
Thanks to social media and beauty gurus, there is more hashtag melanin on camera than ever before. But the same issues follow us on the web. You're probably wondering, Jackie, what the hell was the point of you wasting all this makeup? Like, what, what was the end goal? What was there to learn here? What is the topic of discussion? When you say stuff like, I don't see color, you just, you end up looking like this, silly as hell. With our mass return to natural ingredients like coconut oil, shea butter, and the influx of black-owned brands catering to melanin's unique needs, now skincare products focus on a glow, ensuring that you shine bright like a diamond, no matter your skin tone. Rihanna, let's talk about makeup. Yeah. Shout out to Anthony Overton for our first look, hashtag not spawn. He was a black lawyer with a chemistry degree who saw that women of color didn't have much to choose from when it came to makeup. In about 1900, he formulated a face powder in the color high brown, Ooh. and it was a hit. He made sure the ingredients weren't harmful. He expanded the shade range to nut brown, olive tone, brunette, and flesh pink. Hmm. That last shade name is questionable, but Overton gave us more than any other brand did at the time. A legend. <laughs> A big obstacle for black makeup manufacturers like Overton was that department stores refused to carry their products, so they had to sell door to door. Even media mogul John H. Johnson ran into difficulties. Imagine the creator of Ebony and Jet magazine, bastions of black beauty, struggling to convince department stores and existing makeup brands to expand their offerings. So in 1958, he made his own. It's because of him and his wife Eunice that our grandmas and aunties were able to purchase Fashion Fair for all their looks. Nearly 100 years after Overton blessed us with high brown, supermodel Iman created Iman Cosmetics in 1994, using her name and fame to call attention to the continued lack of diversity in makeup, not just for black women, but for all women of color. But to this day, models and actresses, and even regular folks at the makeup counter at the mall, deal with uneducated makeup artists or brands unwilling to offer darker shades. So once again, someone had to shake up the game. Rihanna's Fenty Beauty blew the beauty world's mind because at its launch in 2017, the makeup aisles still look like this. Overton would be so disappointed. I mean, don't get me wrong, CoverGirl Queen collection came in clutch circa 2007, mm. but I remember friends having to drive around and figure out which stores stocked certain brands. And while Fenty Beauty wasn't the first makeup brand to have a large shade range, I see you Lancome, they were smart about advertising that they did. I mean, Rihanna's face certainly helps. Yes. But it's true, when I look up reviews on YouTube, I add for dark skin at the end of every search. I need to know you're giving me something deeper than a toasted almond. Fenty's 40 shades coupled with products that promoted the idea of a glow added to the excitement and cemented the shift in standards of beauty from dull and powdery to moisturized and beamy. to really know who's doing the Lord's work, Belanda Addis is a cosmetic chemist and manager of L'Oreal's Women of Color Lab and has invented 30 new shades. Science. No more dark 003. Much like names, the way you present yourself has implications in the outside world. Discrimination in the workplace and schools are prime examples of how perceptions of black beauty and even cleanliness are politicized and punished. The products and practices we've used over the years to enhance our beauty tie back to one thing. As humans, we just want to be accepted. And if our appearance is the reason for alienation, we invent ways to tailor our looks to the requirements of the day. It's not shameful, it's a form of survival. Every dark-skinned beauty guru striving for visibility on social media, every person whipping up concoctions for curls, coils, and kinks, and every parent walking up to the school to defend their child's hairstyle deemed distracting. It's our perseverance and ingenuity, not society's kindness, that has allowed us to make the strides we have. So, how has your idea of beauty changed over the years? Who's your beauty icon? Let us know. If you enjoy watching Say It Loud, then you'll probably like our friends over at America From Scratch. It's another PBS digital studio show that explores questions like, what might the US be like if it was founded today? And what if there were no states? Should we lower our voting age? Should we colonize Mars? It's basically your civics class, but fun. Check out America From Scratch at the link in the description below. 
Click here to watch more episodes of Say It Loud. Click here to watch Danielle from Origin of Everything. And click here to watch Box explain more about the makeup industry. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.